This is Civil Net's Daily News Digest for Thursday, November 14th. I'm Paul Chadurjian. And I'm Maria Titizian. In today's Digest... A tragic double funeral in Damascus. Two Armenian children are laid to rest. Plus, defending the homeland, the two presidents of the two Armenian republics visit the troops. And how did Armenia's parliament vote about officially recognizing the independence of nagorno karabakh Later, soccer fans in L.A. find out why you should mark February 15th on your calendar. Yesterday, we reported on the tragic news of a six-year-old Armenian boy who was killed in a mortar attack near his school, the Holy Translators Armenian School in Damascus, Syria. Late last night, we learned that yet another child, third grader Vanessa Micho Bedros, was also killed in that blast. We have late video of their double funeral. Some of you may find this video too difficult to watch. We extend our condolences to the families. Armenia's president Serge Sarkisyan and nagorno karabakhs president Bako Sahagyan attended military drills conducted by NKR Defense Forces on November 12th in the northern region of Artsakh. Yesterday, after the drills, both presidents talked with Karabakh military leaders. President Sahagyan updated everyone on how his army's fighting capabilities keep improving, saying that a strong military is one of the most effective components of ensuring peace, stability, and security in the region. Last week, Sarkisyan and his Azerbaijani counterpart, Ilam Aliyev, agreed to meet later this month to resume talks on nagorno karabakh Ilam Aliyev is currently in Turkey, where, among other issues, he is expected to discuss the nagorno karabakh conflict with Turkish officials. Plus, last week, Turkey's foreign ministry stated it will open its border with Armenia, closed arbitrarily by Ankara in the early 1990s, only if Yerevan ends what it calls its, quote, occupation of nagorno karabakh The government of Azerbaijan has decided to suspend nearly $4 billion in planned investments in Mexico. Azeris are steaming mad that Mexico City removed the statue of the late Azeri leader Haidar Aliyev from a public park that Azerbaijan invested $5 million to beautify. The public in Mexico and in the U.S. objected to the statue of a man who's known for violating human rights and derailing democracy with his dictatorship. Aliyev's statue was cut off to storage and Azerbaijan decided to pass on investments in Mexico. Slate.com reports there are 14 other countries where Azerbaijan has bought and built memorials to honor its late leader, who happens to be also the father of that nation's current president. A draft law on the recognition of the independence of the nagorno karabakh Republic by the Republic of Armenia did not pass in Parliament yesterday. The draft law was submitted by the leader of the opposition heritage party, Zari Postanjian. The idea that Armenia must officially recognize NKR has been part of the political discourse for a number of years, and one which the Heritage Party has been lobbying for. However, only Heritage and the ARF Tashnatsutun voted in favor of the bill, while the ruling Republican Party of Armenia, Prosperous Armenia, and the opposition Armenian National Congress refused to take part in the vote. As we reported in earlier newscasts, the government of Armenia has decided to privatize the country's retirement pension fund. It will be mandatory for all citizens of the country born after 1974 and will take effect in January of next year. This has been a process that has been ongoing for a number of years. Opposition forces in parliament and a number of specialists in the field have been lobbying to stop the implementation. Yesterday, the ARF Tashnaktsutrun faction in the National Assembly was successful in collecting 44 signatures from the 131 members of parliament to hold a special parliamentary session to discuss postponing the introduction of this new privatized pension plan. The special session will take place on Friday, November 15th. A protest is also scheduled to coincide with that session. Today we are going to bring you some economic news. Armenia Central Bank cut its key refinancing rate to 8% from 8.5% on Tuesday after data showed a decline in inflation. Annual inflation came in at 7.1% in October. The central bank said down from 8.2% recorded in September. That is still higher than the government's target range of between 2.5% and 5.5% for the whole year. 
Armenia's Polish diamond production is up for 2013. Between January to September of this year, 66,965 carats of polished diamonds were produced, compared to 42,427 carats in the same period of last year. According to the National Statistical Service of Armenia, the country produced 818 kilograms of jewelry compared with 740 kilograms for 2012. Meanwhile, Armenia's Ministry of Economy reported that Russian diamond mining giant Al Rosa sold 40,233 carats of diamonds to Armenia in the first three quarters of 2013. Last year for the same period, Al Rosa sold Armenia 34,769 carats of rough stones valued at more than seven and a half million dollars. Armenia has started to import large quantities of eggs. For the first three quarters of 2013, egg imports increased 12 times compared to the same time period in 2012. Compared to 2010, the price of eggs have increased by 55%, while food prices on average increased only by 16.6%. And compared with last year, the price of eggs increased by 18%. According to producers, this was conditioned by an increase in global prices of poultry feed. An interesting trend is that Armenia has started to import eggs from Georgia, something which is unprecedented as Armenia used to export large quantities of eggs to the Republic of Georgia, our neighbor, until 2010. In recent years, Georgia has rapidly developed poultry production and currently has 22 poultry factories instead of the previous three. Aside from that, poultry feed is almost completely produced locally, which gives Georgia a competitive advantage. And to some sweet news about honey. Natural honey exports from the Republic of Armenia for 2013, January through September, increased 2.3 times compared to 2012. So a total of 6.2 tons of honey with a total customs value of $93,400 was exported to China, the United States, and Russia. For those of you sending money to Armenia, the exchange rate is on the screen as we take a look at the forecast. And we'll be happy to accept that. <laughs> It'll be cloudy in Yerevan with a high of 14 or 57 Fahrenheit. Gyumri will be sunny with a high of 8. Stepan Lagerk will have a high of 13 and an overnight low of 4. Our travel forecast takes us to Hong Kong where it'll be 26 degrees and sunny. And our travel music is traditional 30s Chinese performed in the 60s. And in Hong Kong over the weekend, more than 100 Armenians, including His Holiness Karakin II, the Supreme Patriarch and Catholicos of all Armenians, attended the opening ceremony of the Jack and Julie Maxian's Armenian Center. The ambassador of the Republic of Armenia to the People's Republic of China, Armin Sarkisian, welcomed the guest and talked about the importance of creating an Armenian center. He said he hopes the new center will help unify Armenians in China and the region. You may recall we mentioned the role of Calcutta Armenian Paul Chater in developing the modern Hong Kong. We've been following the tragic news out of the Philippines where as many as 10,000 people may have lost their lives because of Typhoon Haiyan. It is the strongest storm ever recorded and today President Serge Sarkisian sent a letter of condolence to the President of the Philippines Benino S. Aquino. The third, the UN says more than 11 million people have been affected by the storm and more than 673,000 people have been displaced. And soccer fans in Southern California, listen up. The Armenian Premier League champion Shirak Football Club will play an exhibition match with the Los Angeles Galaxy on February 15th in the city of Carson, which is about a 10 minute drive south of downtown LA. The game will take place at the Stub Hub Center, which can hold up to 27,000 people. Definitely a game worth seeing. <laughs> at the opera last night, the Italian Embassy and the Ministry of Culture honored the departing Italian ambassador to Armenia, Bruno Scapini with a special concert at the Aram Khachadurian Concert Hall. On stage was the Vivaldi Ensemble of the world-famous Italian orchestra Solesti Venetti. Have a listen. <laughs> On the program were performances of Italian Baroque and classical music, including pieces from Antonio Vivaldi, Giuseppe Tartini, and Giochino Rossini. I hope I pronounced those all right. And that is our digest for this Thursday. We leave you with more from Solisti Vanetti. See you tomorrow.